Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Tech Geek Josh, and I'm back again with a new video. This time, you guys are currently watching the review of the LG Premiere Pro for Straight Talk Wireless. Let's get to it. So, let's first take a look around the body of the LG Premiere Pro itself, starting at the top. So, we see we have a 5 megapixel camera, and to the right of that we have our earpiece. My apologies that my camera is not focusing on the subjects that I'm currently talking about. There we go, my apologies for that. And right in between the camera and the earpiece we see we have some sensors. And those sensors are the light and proximity sensor. And as you can see, you can see it on camera, but to the naked eye you can't see the sensors doing their thing. And then we see we have our 5.3 inch 720p display with a resolution of 1280 by 720 and I am unsure of the pixel per inch count and then we see we have no off-screen keys that's because they're all on screen back home and overflow buttons and on to the left side we see that we have our separated volume rockers on the bottom we see we have a standard size headphone jack and a micro USB charging port and on the right side, all we get is basically the SIM and SD card tray. You pop that out with the included SIM card and or a paper clip, if I'm not mistaken. And basically, it reveals your slots for your SIM card and micro SD card. And at the top, we see we have a little pinhole microphone right there. And last but not least, on the back, we see we have an 8 megapixel rear facing camera and the LED flash right underneath of it and our power button which in the unboxing and first look of this phone I thought that may have been a fingerprint sensor but I should have known better and it's not a fingerprint sensor if you guys are curious on that subject it's just a normal power button and then we have our straight talk track phone and total wireless branding and a little sticker with some information that I should have been covering up our LG branding right down there and our single rear firing speaker. I've said it multiple times and yet again I'll say it again. Some may like it, most hate it. And that basically does it for the exterior of the LG Premiere Pro. So powering on the Premiere Pro itself you can see that it does have the knock on and knock off feature which is very handy and found on most LG phones to date. So let's go ahead and swipe to unlock. And I gotta say that the display on this phone is rather sharp and crisp. I was surprisingly not expecting it to be of such quality, but let's see if my camera can focus. There we go. It's pretty sharp and pretty crisp, and you can't really make out too many pixels, if any at all. It's just an overall very nice, colorful, and vibrant display. Moving on to the system side of things, let's go ahead and fire up CPU Z and take a look at what we have here. We can see here that the device is powered by a 1.4 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon 425 processor with a Cortex A53 CPU and an Adreno 308 GPU. So, in terms of gaming, you will encounter some lag on most 3D and graphic intensive games, but for most light games and moderate games, you shouldn't expect too much lag. And RAM wise, if we go over and scroll over to device, we get two gigabytes of RAM with 16 gigabytes of built-in storage, which can further be expanded up to two terabytes via that micro SD card slot, which is right over here, like I just previously showed off. And that's pretty nice because we don't usually see such a feature on most phones we usually see up to like 64 gigabytes max but two terabytes this thing can be can hold is actually rather nice and in terms of ROM like I just previously mentioned we get 16 gigabytes of storage with roughly 9 gigabytes available to the user right out of the box and as you can see here internal storage is 9.78 gigabytes 
and right now I have about 7.16 gigabytes free which is 73% so just by this this little information I don't have much downloaded on this phone however just just before starting this review I've noticed that these certain apps have been downloaded and I don't know where they have came from smart news Groupon daily pedometer Yahoo Mail and World War Rising I have no clue where those apps came from I don't think I have any apps on this whole phone you know that those would have came from so I don't know where those came from apart from the carrier itself but I've never ever seen those apps since the unboxing they literally just appeared moments before starting this uh, review so that's quite odd and lastly while we scroll over here to the system tab we see that the Android version is 8.1.0 which was quite surprising simply because well this device actually came with 7.1 nougat oh and ju I just thought I would mention this really quickly this is not a part of this review but I'm currently suffering from some kind of cold and my voice is just you probably can't tell but I'm breathing a little funny um, so I don't know what's up with me it's probably just some common cold but I've I will probably be pausing almost as normal throughout this review so just keep that in mind that I'm gonna be breathing a little weird and I'm gonna try and not to um, you know how you say breathe too much I guess you could say even though that probably sounds a little bad but just just keep in mind that I have a slight cold of some sort okay like I was saying this device has 8.1.0 Oreo and it came supposedly came with Android 7.1 Nougat out of the box but I'm not sure how long they've actually been or have updated the phone but I've seen that it supposedly or supposedly came with Android Nougat and since then it how it now has the 8.1.0 Oreo so that's pretty cool and they pushed a software update to this phone which is quite weird because we don't usually see phones of this caliber and especially from this carrier get software updates which is just in itself is pretty odd so well done for Stray Talk and LG for pushing Oreo to this particular handset and now let's go ahead and take a look at a Geekbench 4 score that I did Oh yeah, that's correct. I haven't even run the app yet because I literally just installed this app just like an hour ago or so. So let me go ahead, get things set up on this app, and I'll come back either once it's about finished or finished. Either way, I'll be right back. Okay everyone, so the test has literally just now finished up and we can see that for the single core score, we get only 659 with a multi-core score of 1840. And that's pretty respectable considering what kind of processor and specs this thing is packing. So no complaints in per, in the performance department, at least with me. I have I have had no issues with this phone since I've unboxed it. Everything has been working pretty well um, without an issue and whatnot. The only major lag that I see with it is basically... Don't mind that notification... I don't know if it's going to pick it up on camera. Is that little recent apps lag, if you can see that app basically stuttering as it jumps to the multitasking. That's the majority of the lag, and it seems to happen basically all the time, no matter what. So, that's more than likely the most lag I've ever encountered on this phone. And, of course, we take a look at the single core score. We're not even on the board. You guys should get the idea. 1840. We are actually above the LG. Sorry, the camera's not wanting to focus today. LG Nexus 5, but below the Xiaomi Mi 4C. So, overall, pretty respectable scores from the LG Premiere Pro LTE. And while we're still on the topic of performance, I have this one game downloaded. And I'm not sure if it's a, a 3D app or a 3D game. If I can touch it correctly, come on now. I don't think it was lagging. I literally downloaded this not not long after I unboxed this phone. And the game hasn't been ran yet. 
This is called Monster Truck Destruction. And in my general opinion, it's probably like the best, you know, somewhat the best game on the market and whatnot. So let's go ahead and quickly take a look at the performance on the LG Premiere Pro LTE. As you can see, so far I've not done anything to this game. I've not bought any vehicles or whatnot. So let's just go ahead and buy this first vehicle and go to single event and practice and in terms of the loading screen we can see no hit um no dropped frames or anything of the sort and let's go ahead and get playing once the timer right there you know tells us it's ready so far i see no evidence of any lag of any sort and i'm also looking through at the actual phone screen I'm recording with I'm not looking off a frame this is all being looked through the camera I'm recording with but yeah so far no complaints whatsoever so far at least in terms of this game I don't really have the time to download any other games it's just that I thought I would like to show off gaming performance with this specific game and this specific phone so as you can clearly see no evidence of lag or any major lag at least with this game and this phone everything seems to be running quite all right so yeah and it actually looks really nice too I'm still looking at the camera that I'm recording with and looking at the phone through the camera I'm recording with my bad my speech was a little messed up there and the screen looks very vibrant actually it looks, well I should say more colorful than any other phone I have this game downloaded on surprisingly. So the screen is definitely a, a pretty good strong point with this phone, at least in my opinion. But yes, as you can see here you basically know the idea and get the general idea of gameplay with the LG Premiere Pro LTE. And backing out of here and going back to the home screen. You can see no major lag of any sort whatsoever. App drawer, that's pretty nice. You can also swipe up and down in the app drawer. I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the unboxing and first look, but you can indeed swipe up to the app drawer. Swipe down, as you can see, it doesn't do anything, but swipe up and you can get to the app drawer like so. Or alternatively, you have this app drawer icon, which you can tap and it'll basically do the same thing. So either or is very nice to have. Let's go ahead and jump into the settings and show you something really quick. You can actually hide the app drawer icon or button if you so choose. So let's navigate and show you where to find that. Settings, general, I may be incorrect. Home touch buttons, yes, there we are. Uh, you, can, you can see that we ha have, hold on a minute. Okay, that was my mistake. It is not found under the section that I was currently at. It's under display, home screen, if I um, press it correctly, home screen, general, select home, and you can see that we have the app drawer icon, and if we disable that, you can see if we go back, okay, I probably didn't um, enable it. Let's go ahead back into the area that it was at, and Go ahead and hit OK. And now, for a much cleaner look, you don't have the app drawer. You now swipe up. And honestly, this is the first time experiencing it in real life. But I actually really like the look of it. I'm all swiping from the app drawer thinking it's a Samsung. But you swipe up from the screen, not the app drawer. Or not the dock. Okay then, never mind. I guess you can swipe up from the dock. It just wasn't working correctly in my, um, for whatever reason but as you can see it just gives an overall much cleaner look to your phone but me personally I like to have that on so we'll go ahead and leave that on or leave that enabled for the remainder of this video and since we were just in the settings let's go ahead and close out of the game let's go back to the main page of the settings and basically take a look around and see what it has to offer so under network and internet, we see that we have airplane mode, Wi-Fi, mobile data, 
advanced calling, call, tethering, mobile networks. Under mobile networks, we see we have data roaming, network type and strength, access point names, and roaming state. VPN, wireless emergency alerts. And then if we're looking for something else, we see we get Bluetooth, location, and network settings reset. Backing out of that, connected devices, sound, display, under display. We get home screen like we just took a look at. Uh, select home, so go back in here once again. And we can basically either show all apps on the screen, which we found with some of the devices we unboxed and took a first look at on the channel. And the default is home and app drawer. And as I just previously went over, you can hide the app drawer if you so choose. Wallpaper, screen swipe effect, icon shape. You can also change the shape of the icons. Pretty self-explanatory. Right now they are a rounded square. These icons right here. That's very nice that you have the ability to customize that. Let me go ahead and find it again. The options we have are original, rounded square, round, and cylinder. And you can take a look at these. Mostly these last two icons, They don't, those are the only two that majorly change. As you can see there, round and cylinder. But I personally like the default rounded square icon look. Then we have grid, loop home screen, which if we enable that, go back home. We can see that we can just keep scrolling. So I'd like to have that feature disable because it's kind of annoying in my personal opinion and we also have search which is currently disabled and i think you guys may have saw that in the unboxing and first look you just swipe down and basically brings you to google search which could be handy for some people but for me personally it's basically kind of annoying so let's go ahead and turn this off again or as well backing out of that we get Wallpaper and theme, pretty self-explanatory there. You can change the wallpapers or change the theme. Right now we get two default themes, LG and white. Then we get your font, which you can either change the type of the font and change the size of it right here. Very nice. The font types are Roboto, LG Smart, Kind Gothic, Friend, Travel, and Yo-Yo. More than likely, all the same kind of fonts we see with a lot of LG phones. Display size, you can set the items on the screen to a size easy for us to see, and some items may change position is what it basically says there. Comfort view, which basically reduces eye strain with less blue light on the screen. I've never really understood what that actually really does, but if we go into it, you can see that... Um, we basically have low and high. As you can see right now, it seems to be disabled. And we also have black and white, which is grayed out. Use comfort view if we enable that. I'm not sure if you can tell a much difference in the display. You sort of can. But honestly, on the phone I'm using to record with, I can't tell much of a difference. But you should get the idea if you used this little feature before. And then we got screen brightness. You can automatically adjust it right then and there, which is pretty nice. And as you can see, we can also change it on the drop down notification center. Then we get auto brightness, auto rotate screen, screen timeout, screen saver, and lock screen and security. Under lock screen and security, we get a lot of options. We get Google Play Protect, Find My Device, Security Update, Set screen lock which as you can clearly see right there I have not put a lock screen on this phone as of yet we can also customize the lock screen secure lock settings content lock location encryption and credentials set up sim card lock make passwords visible phone administrators trust agents which is grayed out screen pin usage access and again lock screen notifications then for the extensions, which is also a little nice touch, we see that we have Smart Cleaning, Gaming, Shortcut Keys, which I have disabled. Basically, if we go into here, we can basically use either of these combinations to open either or open certain apps, such as if we press the 
volume up key twice, we can open Capture Plus, which is indicated right there. And below it, if we press the volume down key twice, we can open up the camera. I find I find quite a few of these features a little annoying in that I don't personally like and or use. And we also get Knock On and Knock Off, which basically is pretty self-explanatory. And we see it with a lot of LG phones. I'm not sure if I can do it correctly here. There you go. Knock On and Knock Off. Pretty handy. And yes, you can disable that if you find it annoying. Then we get apps and notifications. Battery. Okay, so now that we're talking about battery life, let's go ahead and, well, now that we're talking about battery, let's talk about battery life. So standby time, as indicated on the box, is... Let me look over here. I have the box right over here with me. And talk time is up to 14 hours. And standby time is up to 8 days. 8 days and it has a 2880 milliamp hour battery. And that's that's pretty mediocre for a device like this. And especially for the standby time, I was expecting at least close to... Oh, I don't know, like close to like 12 to 15 days of standby time. But that could be a little bit um, nitpicking about that. But as you can clearly see here, I'm at 98% battery. That's because I unplugged it earlier this morning because it needed charging last night i didn't finish charging it last night before i went to bed i plugged it back in this morning and well as you can see at where it's at right now 98 percent no complaints with the battery this far or so far and i expect it to be pretty good throughout my time using it although if you are a heavy user you probably may need to take a charger around just in case you run the battery down and if you're a moderate user, well, you can probably get through a full day on this battery. Especially if you're a light user, you can probably get through all day and probably some or a couple hours the next day. Then you may have to charge it. But in general, battery life is not an issue with me with the LG Premiere Pro. And it's definitely a plus with me so far, that is. Now let's go ahead and back out of here. Then we get storage. I also forgot to mention this in the unboxing and first look, which I truly apologize for that. But it's a 16 gigabyte phone. We just went over that when we opened up CPU-Z. And it has 16 gigabytes of memory with around around 9 point... No, actually around 9 gigabytes available out of the box. And I just went over how much storage I have left and how much I have free. You can see right there. Uh, then we have accounts, then accessibility, Google, and system. This is another area where I forgot to talk about in the unboxing of this phone. Go to about phone, and well, I just went over it as well. Android 8.1.0 with the June 1st, 2018 security patch. So my apologies there as well. But under system, we get update center, language and input, date and time, memory, backup, Restart and reset about phone regulatory and safety location and accounts and Well that basically does it for the settings of the Premiere Pro. So let's go ahead and Jump right into the camera department and take a look at what we have here so here's the camera interface on the Premiere Pro itself and some toggles we have up here are settings mode which if we tap mode we see that we have auto and flash jump cut. Then we have a little effects button. We see we get negative, posturize, aqua, mono, non, and sepia. Backing out of that, we have our camera flip button right there to swap between either the front or rear camera. Another neat thing about the camera about this phone is that we can also flip it like so. For whatever reason, it doesn't always work for me, but that's probably just how I'm doing it, but there you go, other than tapping the button. And then we get your flash auto on and off, as you can see right here. On, auto, come on now. I'm still looking at the phone I'm recording with. And off, there we have it. Then down here we get your record button, tap that, and now we are recording a video. The nice thing about this phone is that it records in 1080p both front and the rear, which is very nice. And we can also pause it 
stop it like so. And we could have also taken a picture while we were recording, which is basically the norm with most phones these days. And then there is our camera shutter button. You can see. Pretty fast for the most part. Of, of course, I'm not repeatedly tapping it, but there you have it. It's pretty fast. And then here's our recently taken photos and or video. And you, for the first time, if you haven't viewed any photos or video yet from the camera app, you can see that we get gallery and photos as our option, but we're not going to go into that. There you have it with that. And a little drag out, how you say, shortcut. We can share our photos and or video to any of these sites right there. And let's go into the settings and take a look around. So we have HDR, cheese shutter, which is basically found on a lot of LG phones, scan QR code, tag locations, grid, and help. And then down here, we get, sorry, a little too close there. We tap the photo or the camera uh, button. We see that we have an 8 megapixel sensor and it goes down to 6 megapixel at 1 by 1. Currently it's set at 4 by 3 at 8 megapixel. Then for the video, we get full HD at 16 by 9, which as you can see here is 1080p. Then it goes down to HD at 16 by 9, which is only 720 and we also get your timer. And let's go ahead and flip to the front facing camera and take a look at what we have there. So we get selfie shot, saved as flip, flipped with an uh, ED at the end, HDR, gesture view, G shutter, tag locations, and help. And here are the same toggles right down here. We tap photo. We see that we have a 5 megapixel front camera right up here and it goes down from there all the way down to 3.7 megapixels and then same for the video full HD at 16 by 9 1080p resolution and also 720p at 16 by 9 and there you have it there's all the camera features and whatnot about the LG Premiere Pro itself and one last thing that I would like to cover is emojis even though I probably may have went over if it has emojis or not in the unboxing but just in case i haven't and for all you new people that watch this video before that video well here is your lg keyboard and underneath this little symbol key is your emoji button tap that and there you have it these happen to be my recent emojis by the way and yes there you guys have it all of your emojis and Again, I've said this also before, but I'm going to say it again. There is no shortage of your emojis, just if you guys are curious about emojis, which a lot of you seem to be, which I have no complaints about. So, it looks like that's going to do it, do for me in this review for the LG Premiere Pro LTE. And man, it's actually quite a long review, so I hope you enjoyed it in any way possible and found it helpful as well in any way possible and with all that being said i shall catch everyone again in the next video